Weekend wins over top competition in volleyball and men's soccer. Women's soccer launches an impactful service project, and we sit down with longtime cross-country head coach Rob Connor for a chat. Portside with the Pilots is coming up now. another weekly edition of Ports Out of the Pilots. I'm your host, Adam Lindman. The Portland men's soccer team continued its rigorous mid-season schedule by hosting the 18th ranked and WCC preseason favorite Pacific in a game televised live on NBC Sports Northwest on Saturday. Pacific handed the Pilots their lone conference loss a year ago, so the Pilots were hungry for revenge at Merlot Field. Portland went ahead early as Ray Ortiz set up an Eric Edwardson header to start the scoring in the 16th minute. The Pilots doubled that lead late in the first half as Benji Michel converted inside the box for his league-leading ninth goal of the year. The Tigers pulled one back with a goal early in the second half, but Ortiz responded with a remarkable bending free kick to put the game away. Head coach Nick Carlin Voigt was pleased with his team's effort to start WCC play. Coach, obviously a huge statement win, beating number 18 Pacific tonight to open the conference. What are your thoughts on tonight's win? I, th I thought we deserved the result. You know, we get up to nothing, and uh, they come back and equalize and put us on our heels a little bit. They're a good team. You know, they're re really well coached. So credit to, to Ryan Jordan. He does a good job. But I was really proud of our guys at home. We're, we're tough to defend, and you know, lucky not to score a fourth goal. And I thought we had a professional second half, and we did we did what we needed to do to hold on to the result. And um, obviously, there's still things we could do better but we're growing and uh, it's our third win over a top 20 team and most importantly now we're 1-0 in the conference against a team that was picked to win the league and we have three points so that was our focus tonight. With the goal and assist on Saturday, in addition to his assist at number 10 Virginia last week, sophomore Ray Ortiz was named the West Coast Conference Player of the Week. It marks the first weekly honor for Ortiz as he joins teammate Benji Michel, who has taken the award twice. Ortiz has 10 assists this season, good for second nationally and tied for seventh on UP single season charts. The Pilot Volleyball team continued league play by hosting LMU and Pepperdine last week. Portland dropped a 3-0 decision to the Lions on Thursday, but bounced back with a come-from-behind five-set victory on Saturday against the Waves. Hannah Troutman finished with 27 kills and 14 digs, while setter Kaylee Thompson added 49 assists and 22 digs. Portland has now won four straight matches against perennial power Pepperdine. The Pilots had beaten the Waves just twice in 57 previous meetings prior to the recent streak. Head coach Brent Crouch's team is now 4-2 and two in five set matches this season, with three of those victories coming in the last four matches. We were down, I don't know, 13-8, something like that, in the fourth, and uh, come back and win 25-19 and then win the fifth. Um, they really responded. It's good. They've shown that repeatedly this year. You know, we've had a couple five-set matches where we've come back. Uh, Wyoming earlier in the year, Santa Clara, you know, USF. There's no questioning the fight in this team. They're, they are going to battle and they're not going to roll over. The Pilot women's soccer team returned to Merlo Field this weekend to host rival Santa Clara and then San Francisco. Sophomore Kimberly Hazlitt recorded her first goal of the season on Friday night against the Broncos, but the Pilots had three shots denied by the woodwork as Santa Clara would go on to win by a 4-1 margin. On Sunday against the Dons, sophomore Larkin Russell buried a beauty of a shot from long range midway through the first half to give the home side a 1-0 lead. The score would stay that way until the 83rd minute when the Dons equalized following a scrum in the box. San Francisco then stunned Portland in double overtime on a free kick from distance to secure the 2-1 win. Coming up next, we'll talk with men's track and cross-country coach Rob Connor, an icon here on the bluff. Ports out of the pilots on NBC Sports Northwest continues after the break.
Welcome back. We're joined now by men's cross country and track and field head coach Rob Connor. Rob, you're in your 28th year here at UP. When you first started, did you ever think you'd be here for this long? <laughs> I, I honestly didn't, but uh, when you come in and you have fun every day, it makes it easy to pass the time. And uh, to be honest, in, in our sport, you know, things are measured on a daily basis. How many miles did you run? On a weekly basis, how many miles did you get? You know, on a monthly basis, what meet do we have coming up? On a seasonal basis, on a yearly basis, and you just, and then it just goes and goes and goes. We're, we're training 50 out of the 52 weeks in a year. And there's really no, no time to come up for breath and analyze, oh, I've been here a long time. You know, when, when, I, when I first got here, uh, we were competing against Bill Dellinger at Oregon, Dave Murray at Arizona, Arizona uh, Bob Larson at UCLA, John Chaplin at Washington State, legendary coaches. You know, those guys have all retired. Now I'm, I'm one of the oldest guys, but uh, I love it and would love to try and set the record uh, here at UP of 52 years, but uh, we'll see what happens. So in your time here, you've had a lot of success. 17 NCAA cross country championship appearances. That includes six top 10 finishes. You've won 22 West Coast Conference titles and you've coached dozens of cross country and track all Americans. First, tell me how you've been able to accomplish all that. Second, how you've been able to sustain that level of success. Well, I think it, it just comes back to the athletes, okay? When they see the best guy go to the national meet and get an All-American certificate, and he graduates, the next guy wants to do the same thing. And to be honest, when I first got here and our first All-American was Pete Julian in 1992, and I thought that was the greatest guy in pilot history, and we may never have another guy like that. And that to follow him up with this long list of Every year there's been a number one man on the team and every year that guy's been a national level runner. So it, it, it just, it's the culture of our program. Everybody nationally knows if you want to work hard, you come to the University of Portland. And um, to be honest, uh, it, it's just, it, it starts with the guys. It really has not much to do with me. You know, you have a guy like Pete Julian, Scott Fobble, pushing the guys, it, it, it runs itself. Speaking of the guys, we reached out on social media for some questions, and we got some pretty good ones, and you might recognize some of the names. From Stephen Kirsch, do you ever want the program to not be viewed as the underdog, or is that the mentality you want your team to always have? I always loved the underdog mentality. However, you know, our goal here is to win a national championship, and if you're going to win a national championship, you're probably not going to be the underdog. So uh, I like it, but at the same time, we've got to grow out of that at some point. This one comes from Dave Devine. The VW bus parked in front of your house is a time machine. You can take seven guys from any year in a bid to win nationals. Who's in the van and do we need to upgrade to the pilot bus? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the pilot bus, but you're gonna start with Pete Julian. He's my captain, okay, right now. Then we gotta go to our greatest of all time, David Kinsella. Then we go to our heart and soul of our program's history, Scott Fobble. You go to the most talented runner we've ever had, Alfred Kipchumba. Then you go to the most reliable guy we've ever had, Uli Steidel. Then you go to the most tenacious, fiercest competitor we've ever had, Joe Driscoll. And then you got the guy with the most confidence we've ever had, Reed Buchanan. That's seven guys right there. We would win a national title, guaranteed, with those seven in the van. That is a we may not get there. Line. We may not get there because the van would probably break down. <laughs> Can you even get that thing started? <laughs> uh, that thing has been sold, unfortunately. But. Ah, nuts. Uh, from King Phil Hall on Twitter, what is your favorite cross country or track memory? Well, you got to go back to the greatest day in pilot history, fall of 93. Uh, pilots were ranked 13th, Oregon was ranked 14th. We had never beaten Oregon in the program's history. We had a team meeting that week and we said, guys, we, this is our opportunity to beat Oregon at their meet. And uh, that day we were led by Pete Julian and Ian Soloff and we put five guys in front of Oregon's number one man. They had an Olympian on their team, Carl Keska. He ran in the 2000 Olympics, but we put five in front of their guy and, and Bill Dellinger came up to me after that meet and said, congratulations, you've got a great team. And uh, to have my personal coaching legend say that to me, you know, I went to the Bill Dellinger track camp when I was in high school. And uh, I, I ran really hard that week trying to catch his attention, but he did not notice me. <laughs> he noticed me in 93. This last one's for me and has nothing to do with running. Explain where your love of Portland wrestling comes from and who is your favorite Portland wrestler of all time? Um, uh, I've watched, I had watched Portland wrestling ever since uh, about fifth or sixth grade. Loved it every Saturday night at 11. 
Uh, my favorite of all time would be uh, the king of the coal miners glove match, Dutch Savage. Uh, and uh, often went to the matches myself and just, just love it. And now, luckily, on YouTube, we can see some of those matches. I think my favorite is Billy Jack Haynes, king of the uh, well, full Nelson. Yes. All right, back to running. Last question. Big meet this weekend, the Nutticum Invitational up at Wisconsin. Year in and year out, it's one of the most prestigious events uh, in the country. How is the team feeling and what are your expectations? Well, team's feeling great. They're very excited. Now, this is our first meet of the season, however, with our varsity runners. We're only running four meets this year, starting with this one. So uh, we'll take our chances. I've been known to have an ace up my sleeve, and we've got one this time. Uh, team, uh, the team is, is going to do very well. It's a guarantee. Um, we're going to be up against 20 of the top 25 teams in the country. Okay, There's 35 teams in this race. Everybody gets to run seven. You take off and you go. and um, uh, you know, for us to finish in the top 10 in that meet would be great. Right now, we're ranked 25 in the country. You know, it's about the worst ranking we've had in the last 20 years, I would say. But we haven't run our varsity yet. That's our B team is probably ranked 25 in the nation. So we're, we're going to go kill it. We're going to have fun. Appreciate it, Rob Connor. Good luck uh, this weekend and the rest of the season. Up next, the Pilot Women's Soccer Team launches a community-wide effort to fundraise and donate money to the American Cancer Society. You're watching Port Side of the Pilots on NBC Sports Northwest. Community involvement and giving back have always been a hallmark of the University of Portland women's soccer program. This year, the team has come together and put a plan in place to raise breast cancer awareness on campus while raising money for the American Cancer Society. The team partnered with Portland Gear to design t-shirts and hats that were sold on campus and at most home matches in October. The initiative got off to a strong start on Friday with the first batch of shirts selling out. The effort has already raised more than $6,500 with all proceeds benefiting the American Cancer Society. Community service to this team is actually super important. The fact that we get to be a part of hopefully the cure is phenomenal. We get to be a platform to talk about it. This service project is super close to me because my grandma is a breast cancer survivor. She was diagnosed when I was younger. I'm just super glad to be a part of this project to honor her and to support all the other breast cancer fighters and survivors out there. I am passionate about this project because my grandma is a survivor of breast cancer and she was diagnosed my freshman year here. And from a family who didn't really know anything about breast cancer, we were all shocked. So to have my grandma be a prominent part of my life and who I am and have her survive, it made this project, it was a must. We are incredibly excited to be working with the women's soccer team. Our goal is really to attack cancer from every possible angle. So we work to raise funds for research um, for all types of cancer, as well as prevention programs and services and education for patients and survivors, as well as caregivers. We collaborated with Portland Gear and we're doing this awesome pop-up on campus and 100% of the proceeds from that will be going to the American Cancer Society. Just getting the word out, trying to get as much support with the community and the Portland community as well. Get your pink shirts before the games. We'll be selling them before every game, so get your shirt so we can make Merlot pink. We've had great people on campus who've been involved with this heavily. We call them the Breast Cancer Committee and they're full of wonderful girls who have been helping out the team today also. It was awesome to have this staple and have this cause be what we're about this month as a school, not even just a program. I think that it's really cool to have so many people wrapped around an idea and wrapped around a cause that they feel really heavily about and to see them out here today smiling and communicating with different people is really awesome. Making Merlot pink will be awesome. It's going to be so cool to be able to look up in the stands and see just a sea of pink out there. And I think it'll be really cool to be able to see that everyone is supporting this cause and our team with that as well. Mailing is doing face painting and Villa made us a TIFO to show that the whole campus is involved in this. We have multiple hall directors hanging things up in their dorms. We have things going around campus. So now you're seeing pink practically everywhere you're going, which is awesome. 
when she said she wanted to bring the entire soccer team to our little ACS office, I was like, sure, no problem. And then I saw the entire women's soccer team. I was like, that is a lot of girls. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. They had so many great questions and really had like a thirst for understanding what the American Cancer Society does, what we stand for, and how they can be a part of it. And that's really refreshing. It's also incredibly encouraging because it's not something that in our little bubble we get to see every day. So having them here in a whole lot of purple was pretty exciting. We got to like sit down with them and hear their stories and hear why they're doing it. So it kind of makes this even better because we're doing it just alongside people who have been doing it for years. If you raise $100, that's one night, right, for someone to stay at a Hope Lodge. So $100, not, I mean, among all of you, you could, you could guys can easily get a week for somebody. If you think of it in little increments like that, that's how I, like, no amount of money is too little. Anything you bring in, amazing. During the month, there's so many different ways to get involved. This is not just a the first weekend type thing. We are just having a pink game specifically for this cause. But the whole entire month is dedicated to being pink. And then being in support of the Portland community. We are having a cancer walk October 14th here on campus. And it will be in Childs. And it's for making strides. We're about sharing love and spreading information. and. To get involved in that walk would be huge for our program just because we are having people that are supporting us now support American Cancer Society. I think that U of P is such a fantastic organization and we're really excited that they've been so generous and helpful with us. So we obviously want to continue that, but really continuing to engage the campus in general. Right now we're starting with the women's soccer team, but how can we translate that into the rest of University of Portland as well as the University of Portland alumni and ambassadors beyond? So we have big goals. My ultimate goal of this is to make it be an annual thing. And it's not just this year, and it's not just next year, but it's five years down the line, or hopefully maybe not. And that hopefully by that time that we've been fundraising for all this, there is a cure. Our team specifically, our goal is to just make it a topic so that people know what to do, people have the resources here on campus. We just want to make it a conversation. And despite selling out, the team has ordered more t-shirts and hats, which will be available during the final home weekend, which is October 26th and 28th. You can also visit www.portlandpilots.com backslash donate for more information and to help support the team's fundraising efforts. Port Side of the Pilots continues after the break. Welcome back to Portside. Pilot rower Megan Dopazi has been appointed to serve on the University of Portland Presidential Advisory Committee for Athletics, an active member of the school's Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Megan was also selected as the West Coast Conference representative for the upcoming NCAA Student Athlete Leadership Forum. I'm really excited that Father Mark Foreman was able to select me for his council and I'm really glad that the student athletic experience is going to be shown through women's rowing and I'm really excited to have a voice with the administration and professors that serve on that council as well as Father Mark Foreman himself. Megan time and time again has proved herself as a leader both in the department, on her team, and in the campus community. So she's going to be a great voice for the student athletes at this table. Additionally, this fall she was selected by the West Coast Conference to represent Portland as well as the West Coast Conference at the NCAA Leadership Forum. Um, she's going to be in DC for three days getting to meet individuals from across the nation and across all three divisions and it's going to be a wonderful opportunity for her as well as the University of Portland to gain information from her experience. It'll be really awesome to bring back that experience and the knowledge and um, some of the stories from that back to the UP Athletic Department and the SAC committee that we have and I think it'll be a really awesome experience. The 25th ranked Portland men's cross country team will be in action this Friday at the prestigious Nettycomb Invitational hosted by Wisconsin. The event will feature 20 of the top 30 ranked programs in the nation and the team is excited about the opportunity. Several top 20 teams go every year and it's uh, a really good introduction into kind of the competition that you're going to see at nationals. It's a huge race of 200, 250 runners that within the first 600 meters you're in a 20 meter wide trail so it's just a, a great intro into what it takes to perform well uh, November 18th. 
it's a big deal. It's a really good indicator of both early season fitness and kind of where teams lie. Racing season is finally here. It seems like it's been this long, slow buildup for the past couple months. And all the miles are for those, you know, short minutes it seems, but it's great. The team is looking really strong. We've ran great workouts together. It's exciting. Women's cross country will also be in action against tough competition on Saturday. The pilots will compete at the NCAA pre-nationals hosted by Louisville. The meet will feature six nationally ranked teams and gives Portland the chance to visit the site of the 2017 NCAA championships. Pre-nats is about 40 teams, so roughly 280 to 300 girls, which is probably the biggest field we'll see. It'll be a good test to see where we're at in comparison to other teams. And I think we're ready. I think we're a little underrated this year, but I think we have some really good girls and some really good potential, and I'm really excited to see how we do. I think we're more than ready for this race. I think we had a really, really good um, month of training in September. I think we're all miles ahead of where we were this time last year, so I think we're really ready to just go out there and see what we can do. Portland Volleyball will face a pair of ranked opponents on the road this week. The Pilots visit number 7 BYU on Thursday at 6 o'clock and then travel to number 18 San Diego on Saturday at noon. The Pilots split matches last year against both opponents, including the program's first road win at San Diego since 1989. Portland currently sits alone in fourth place in the WCC standings, while BYU is 6-0 in league and the Toreros are 5-1. Men's soccer continues its tough schedule with a match at San Diego on Friday night. The Toreros are 6-3-1 overall and opened conference play with a 2-0 home win against LMU on Sunday. The Pilots are 6-5 overall, but ranked number 29 in the most recent RPI thanks to one of the toughest schedules in the nation. Women's soccer hits the road for a single game at LMU on Saturday night. The Pilots will look to snap a four-match losing streak against a tough Lions team that is 6-4-3 overall and ranked in the top 50 of the RPI. Be sure to send us any questions, requests for content, or just give us some feedback on the show on social media by using the hashtag Portside. And that will do it for this episode of Portside of the Pilots. We will see you next week.